So welcome to Strategy Battle Games, another Chibet Show YouTube video. You hear your host Chibet Show Damien, and this is my hobby vlog number 34. And in excellent news, she's finished. Yep, I have completed uh, Galadriel, which is uh, rather spectacular news. So you would have seen her. Um, oh hello. Maybe this wasn't such a good idea. You would have seen her um, in a kind of base coated state, and I started to work her up um, last week, but. Um, today she is completely and utterly finished so I'll be talking about what I did with her and um, hopefully um, showing you this rather spectacular model if this thing I had this kind of idea to glue her on the bottom of a cup but it doesn't seem to be playing us. There she is. So I'm really really pleased with how she turned out. Um, I actually put a photo of this up on the group and um, on the GHL, uh, Great British Hobbit League Facebook group got loads of lovely comments so thank you very much for everyone who wrote those. Um, it was a very very enjoyable project to work on and um, I'm very very pleased with how it came out. Um, very very limited range of colours that I actually use. Let's go around the back. There's her hair and her robes. As I said last week, um, a very different challenge for me. Um, trying to paint this, I'd never done anything with this kind of colour scheme really before. I was very, very pleased with how it came out. So, only really basically um, three different parts of this uh, model, which were the. Um, come on, love. Which were the skin, the hair, and the robes. So, I'll talk about each one in turn. So, let's start with the skin. Um, obviously, the face there and the arms down the side. And that was created for a combination of elf flesh, tusk or fur, and pallid witch flesh, which was my um, kind of go to colour for this model. So what I basically did, I wanted a very pale flesh, like elf flesh, and, but I wanted it to be a little pinker, so I added a bit of tusk or flesh to kind of warm it up a bit. And then I basically just added pallid witch flesh to that um, for the successive highlights. So you can sort of see, I think, um, particularly inside the folds of her arm, I don't know how well that will come out, but just on the left and right of, her, um, of this arm around here, on the left and right you should be able to see the skin's a bit pinker, that's where the tusk or furs um, kind of come through. And then on her face, you should see that the highlights are very, very light indeed, and that's where the um, that's where I've done the most pallid witch flesh. Very, very happy with the face actually. Um, I was really worried about because it's a female face, wanting to make the kind of contrast be quite soft and not have harsh, dark brown lines. And um, I think it's come out very, very nicely. Um, the eyes, in particular, I was very, very pleased with how they came out, and they were one of those models that. Um, it wasn't quite clear exactly where the eye was um, and where the eyebrow was and all that but they just seemed to fall nicely for me I just dropped the white and black in and I don't think I corrected them at all um, and that's incredibly hard to see on here I don't know how well if that's gonna yeah there she is, Woo. yeah that's much better cool um, so there you can see the kind of eyes on there that I was very very pleased with um, so that was how I did the flesh and, uh, and I think she came out very, very nice. As I said last week, it's an absolutely lovely sculpt, really, really nice. Um, someone said that they didn't, they weren't keen on the model's face, and it doesn't look like Kate Blanchett, um, definitely. But um, I think it is a nice sculpt. And hopefully down here now you can see the kind of um, where the tusk or flesh is in the um, recesses there. So that was kind of how I did the skin. I think that came out um, really quite nicely overall. Uh, so next up was the hair. Which was um, zoom out here. It was base coated in Zandri dust, and I think actually for shading, I use Seraphim Sepia, which is kind of yellowy golden um, shade rather than Agrax Earth shade, Earth shade, just to make it a little lighter. Um, then it was re-highlighted with Zandri dust, then up with Crackstone, and then a very um, light edge highlight of Rakath flesh, and that has given me this effect here. So again, it, it did what I wanted it to, is which is um, kind of create a pale, kind of blonde hair without dark brown, too much dark brown in the recesses. Okay. Turn around here. Who are you talking to? I'm talking to, <laughs> talking to the nurse. Oh, I'm talking to myself. There's a little guest guest appearance in the hobby vlog from Emma. You're right. Yes. Yes. I've done twelve. All right. I'll see you soon. 
can I was at a hobby vlog first for Emma there. Um, Brian Ratchford, he'll be the he'll be the guy to ask. So um, yeah, there we go. There's the hair. So you do see you do get some kind of like darker areas in there, um, but I don't think it looks too dark. And I think um, it does a kind of I think it's done a pretty nice job of kind of blonde hair, a kind of pale blonde hair, which works quite nicely without looking too yellow. I think that's always the always the trouble. You don't want it to look too kind of bright yellowy. So yeah, that was the hair. Again, lovely, lovely skull back here. Tons and tons of detail, and just quite a lot of um, that. If you were doing kind of troops with this, I think it would drive me insane trying to do all the little highlights again and again and again. But just for one model, it's nice to kind of sit down and just work your way through it. And again, very, very nice definition on these kind of um, bits of the hair dropping down in front. It was lovely. The um, crown was just, um, I don't know, lead belt, or chain mail, or something like that, I'm not really sure. Just picked out the silver. Make sure I put a little dot of um, pink in that little gap there where a forehead's shining through. That's quite cool. Then we got onto the robes, which is obviously the vast majority of it. Now you saw her last week when it was um, when it was very, very grey, and that had been a base coat of Codex grey, and then um, Eshing grey worked into the shadows. Which worked quite nicely. And so what I basically did, um, I think I did Codex Grey here, and then I added a lot of um, pallid witch flesh to it and worked it up, and it still looked um, really, really grey. And then so what I basically did was I was like, it, it's amazing the the subtleties that even if you add a little bit of grey to white, the overall effect is grey and not white. So I just went pure pallid witch flesh to the top um, once and then started going the other way and adding in the greys, Codex Grey and Fortress Grey into the Pallid Witch Flesh and kind of working that back into the shadows. So I kind of worked in reverse in a way. And then once I'd done too much shadowing, I would um, come back in and add another highlight of Pallid Witch Flesh at the top and um, just kind of constantly mixing up various different shades to um, add in different layers. And I think you can see down here that it, um, it ended up coming out quite well. We, you end up with a lot of different kind of shades of grey on there. I think I think in total there's about 50 shades of grey um, on this, um, which is quite appropriate. Um, so that kind of came out well. Um, it was toughest around here at the back. I always find that wherever there's a kind of cloak pulled, I think that's the um, toughest area of any cloak to kind of work on for me. Um, but what I kept finding was, you probably see that you can't see a lot of um, eshing grey on here anymore because Every time I added the white, the, the dark shadows just looked so dark. I mean, occasionally I've left them, like, for definition, like, around the edge of the arm, you can see it's pretty dark in there, and maybe down that, just um, down that big gap there, you can see it's very, very dark. But, but what I found myself doing was constantly painting lighter greys into the shadows to kind of try and lighten the model, so that it didn't look like... It, I just found as if the darker the shadows were, the more the robe looked grey. Whereas if you worked in pale greys, the more the robes look white. So it was a kind of interesting learning curve, and I just it was quite a lot of fun to be honest, because again it was only on one model, and I just kept mixing up lots and lots of different colours, lots of different shades of kind of pale whites and off whites, and adding them. I think what I've ended up with is um, well, it's the fact that I'm very very satisfied with myself. So um, yeah, that's kind of how I worked that up. So. Have a look, see if we can. So there she is. Um, as I said, a great sculpt with a nice, nice profile there. Just comes around here, and that is my um, Galadriel, who um, I'm very happy with. So thank you to uh, Michael Churchill, who sorted me out with this Galadriel. Um, I think back in December. Um, it's very much an unexpected model at the time. It wasn't really on my kind of to-do list or my want list or anything, but. Um, it's a very very cool sculpt, and I'm very happy to have um, to have got her and managed to complete her fairly quickly. I think um, I'd have to check. I don't have the, any sort of stats on this, but it feels to me like she has um, been one of the quickest models in my collection to go from being bought to being painted. Certainly of late, um, generally they languish in a box for um, a few months or something. So very, very pleased with her. Very slight model, very um, different kind of sculpt for me. But one that I think came out um, really, really well. So do let me know um, what you think in the comments below. And um, yeah, so there we go. So that is my Galadriel. And she was finished. And I also said to you last week that um, if I did get her finished, 
that I would start work on my next model and I have done that indeed. So here he is, it's Gandalf. It's original Fellowship Gandalf. Really enjoyed painting Dal Gould or Gandalf before Christmas and so I wanted to do another one. So here he is. Um, this model is very cool. Um, I might have said this before but I've, I've had this since I got this for Christmas in 2001 as part of the Metal Fellowship box and he's been I mean, he's been languishing around for 15 years and I just rem I remember seeing him in a white dwarf about three months before the game launched and just seeing this model going oh my god that's perfect that's Gandalf I, I need to get that it was crazy to think I, I saw that and I thought that and then it's 15 years later that I'm actually getting around to painting it it's kind of bizarre how life works out like that but um, yeah so so far um, so obvious nothing particularly special I've just base coated him and shaded him um, you can actually see it as a little bit of an intram step I don't know how well it will show up I've painted the eyes and hopefully you can see the kind of black pupil is on his cheeks as well where it's kind of gone too far and this is generally speaking what happens when I paint eyes that the first pass at it um, there'll be too much black and then what I do is I go in and tidy that up and make the eyes smaller so um, I don't know a little painting tip from me there is always don't worry about the eyes looking a bit bug eyed to begin with uh, mine always look very very big and then you go in and you kind of um, tidy it up so I'll probably go in there with a dark brown and paint that underneath and above the eye to kind of um, make the eye slit look a bit smaller and then paint the flesh on so um, he's the next model that I'm going to be working on and I'm going to start working on him um, today actually um, I was glad you was done um, it's Saturday as I'm recording this and so um, yeah, hopefully I'll make a bit of progress on him so my hope is again um, I'm on schedule so far I'm on my uh, third week of the year and I have completed my third hero which um, adheres to my kind of one hero a week target um, so things are going well and um, fingers crossed by next week when I come back um, there will be a fourth hero to join um, Yasneg, Fimbrel and Galadriel in the 2016 um, completed pile but there we go so I hope you enjoyed this, I hope it's given you some insight and I think I've given you a pretty good look at this model except for right at the end when she's gone horrendously blurry what's wrong with you? Go on, one last one last victory shot, come on Gladwell you fancy it don't you? yes, there you go um, so yeah I hope you've enjoyed this and um, be sure, thanks as ever for all the comments um, I've just really been overwhelmed the last couple of weeks there's been a lot of interaction on the hobby vlog and um, it does motivate me to kind of you know reply and then keep getting more content out for you guys. So um, please comment below what you think. Until next time, don't forget to comment, like, share, and subscribe. Support your hobby host, Hobbit host, by clicking in the link channel host, Hobbit host, whatever we call them, um, by clicking in the links below. Um, follow us on Twitter and like us on Facebook. Support your hobby and happy strategy battle gaming.